Tell us something that's new and groovy. Reality. Do you know the story of Reality Winner? I do not. The person. Okay, so Reality Winner um, was an NSA contracted translator, former US Air Force uh, vet, who in June 2017, two FBI agents arrived at her house. They said, we have a warrant to search your house. Do you know why we're here? And she sort of wasn't sure why we why they were here. But what then happens is that they then interviewed her over a period of you know, an hour or so, and they recorded the interview with her outside her house and then inside the house. The, the search team turns up, takes over the house, and then they move into the house. They're trying to find a room that they can interview her in, but it's a small house, and there's only one room, a room that she says is weird and creepy because it's out behind the kitchen and it's not clean, but there are no chairs. So there is an, a, an audio recording of this. That then ended up in a uh, really, really harsh prosecution. Um, it's, this is a historical case, so people may well know the details of it. In case anyone doesn't, I won't say any more than, than that because there is a possibility that if you don't know it, you know, I don't want to spoil the film, although actually the fact that people don't know what happened to Reality Winner is astonishing. She was very, very severely punished, essentially for the mishandling of classified documents. Um, that transcript was, in 2019, turned into a verbatim play by Tina Saturn, verbatim theatre, which is you take actual transcripts and you dramatise them. That has now been turned into a film uh, by uh, Tina Satter, starring Sidney Sweeney, who is absolutely terrific as Reality Winner. And we are told very early on, there's a thing at the beginning, which says everything that you're going to see is taken directly from the transcripts of the FBI recording of the two FBI agents then joined by a whole other team of people who carried out the interview. So we have, firstly, this sense of authenticity. What you're hearing actually happened. It's a dramatised version of it, but the words are what actually happened. Every now and then, during the interrogation, we see little flashes of, like, a real photograph of Reality Winner, social media posts. Um, there are strange moments in which the conversation has been redacted, in which what we're watching suddenly has got, like, a kind of weird David Lynchian ellipse in which somebody's saying something and then suddenly they'll disappear from the frame during the redacted sequence. Can I just ask, mm. is Reality Winner... Her name. It's actually the name. It's yes. not like a nickname. No, 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 that's her name. Reality Lee Winner, that is her name. Wow. Yes, Thank you. and uh, apparently, uh, I believe this is correct, her parents, were because they, they wanted, uh, as their daughter, a real winner. And apparently that's where the, where the name came from. But that is her real name. Um, so what happens over the course of this drama, it's 84 minutes long, is she comes home, the two FBI agents are there, they immediately accost her. They show that they're recording. They say they have a search warrant. There's a lot of kind of small talk about, um, okay, we're going to have to go into the house. And she, okay, fine. Well, I've got a cat and a dog in the house. And there's a lot of stuff about, well, how are we going to deal with the dog? Well, the dog needs to be taken out and put in a pen. Would you please shut the door because the cat may run? So there's all this very quotidian, very sort of ordinary procedural stuff going on. Have you got groceries? Do the groceries need to go into the fridge? Can we get into the thing? Yeah, you can't go into the house yet because people are coming in. Do you know what this is about? And the whole thing has a kind of Kafka-esque quality to it because you, you, all you hear is what she is being told, which is that they're not telling her what it's about, but does she know what it's about? Do, does she know what she's meant to have done? Do we know anything about the context of this? Now, obviously, if you do, if you are, for example, particularly interested in American politics, which I am, you do know the story. But if you don't, it's kind of even weirder because... All the way through, there is this absolute tension between this This is normal, but it's also completely abnormal. There's one moment in she says, am I going to jail tonight? And there's something about the understatement of that question. Also, because you know that that was actually how it was asked. Am I going to jail tonight? Which is such a specific question. It's, it's not just like, am I going to jail, but am I going to jail tonight? The, the whole thing plays out in very sort of the the visuals of it are very kind of unforgiving, sort of handheld. Once they get into, once they get into the house and they get into the room, which she has described as weird and creepy, which is funny because there is something really, really weird and creepy about the whole drama. It's in this kind of unforgiving strip lit environment that feels like you're watching a documentary, but also feels like everything is. There's a sense of heightened reality about it. There is an absolutely brilliant uh, score by Nathan McKay, who um, did the stuff for Industry on the television. 
And the score has got this kind of sense of throbbing unease. It's almost like a science fiction score. At times it reminded me of Mika Levy's uh, score for Under the Skin, which I absolutely love. So that these incredibly innocuous exchanges about, do you need to go and do that? Do you need to what, just go? It's got this noise going on in the background of it that sounds maybe like it's the noise in her head or m maybe it's because the whole world is sh shifting on its axis and th the world that she knew up until this point is about to be irrevocably changed. It's also worth contextualising it and saying that, of course, when they turned up and they're talking about the mishandling of classified documents, this is what they want to talk to her about, they are essentially carrying out a warrant that is under the, um, the Espionage Act, the 1917 uh, Espionage Act. Ironically, of course, that's the same act that would later be cited in the raid on Mar-a-Lago when it turned out that Trump had just quite coincidentally stashed a whole bunch of classified documents that obviously he was able to magically declassify with his mind. Should he be severely punished, do you think? Let's wait and see Shall we wait what and happens see? to Trump. The wheels of justice will turn slowly. Yes, and the arc of history inclines... What is it? The arc of history is towards long, but justice. inclines toward justice. Although I think it's... Is I that think true? It's, yeah, I think it's extremely unlikely that the kind of sanctions that were dished out to reality winner would ever come back to the, uh, you know, Mango Mussolini. Also, but, that, that quote, I know this is a sidebar, yeah. it depends where in the world you live, I think, as to whether you might go along with the fact whether the arc of history yeah, precisely towards justice. Anyway, this is a really, really gripping film. Um, it's something so unsettling about it. It's such a brilliant technique. A fantastic central performance by Sidney Sweeney, who, of course, in White Lotus as the stroppy teenager, who's, you know, it, it, it's a really, really great performance. You absolutely believe in her. There's something palm sweating about it. I was watching. How you would know, you classify? Is, is, would you, is this a thriller? Well, weirdly enough, it kind of is. Although it's, you know, it's literally a thriller in which two people turn up and question somebody about mishandling of documents. But it's, I found it really anxiety inducing, like really properly panic attack inducing and I thought it was really well done it's called Reality which is the name of the central character and uh, it's directed as I said by, by Tina Satter based on a verbatim play based on the verbatim transcripts of the FBI turning up at Reality Winner's House it's really something because when I get emails from uh, streaming companies saying we've got a new TV series or we've got a new film it always has like three words to describe yes. you know um, disturbing comedic French. <laughs> That's right, French. French. Really? No, I don't want to watch that. <laughs> or, you know, so I'm thinking, so, th so those three words for, for, if you're writing them for this. Yeah. Anxiety yes. inducing procedural. Okay. There you go. Okay. So that, and that's reality. Reality. A movie? A movie, yes. Okay. I meant what I meant was cinema. Yes. And I meant yes when, when, we, when we said yes. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? Yeah, and if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.